Okay, that's obviously super fake, but climbing walls is very cool. So let's talk about how I actually did it. Lately, I've been feeling like I've been doing a lot of programming and not so much engineering. I'm studying computer science in school, so that makes sense, but I still get that itch to work with my hands sometimes. About a month ago, I watched all the Spider-Man movies back to back. My back! Oh, my back! The natural conclusion of this is that I too wanted to climb walls. It seemed like a good mixture of an engineering challenge and a lot of self-endangerment, so I began doing some research. I came across this fairly old concept that I first saw in the form of an Air Force challenge from 2012, where they challenged various universities to create a system to let someone reach the top of a 90-foot concrete silo. The winning design by students at Utah State University used dual back-mounted vacuum cleaners that had hoses running to large pads on each hand that acted as sort of powered suction cups. Suction cups have been used to climb all sorts of things in the past, but they are usually only good for extremely smooth surfaces like glass. Powered suction cups like this work much the same way, except they have some sort of fan or pump actively pulling the air out of them. These require much less perfect conditions to get a good seal, and they're used on the industrial scale for moving things like large paving stones. The students from Utah State built their version of this using battery-powered vacuum cleaner motors. These are pretty good because they move a lot of air very quickly, but they're also very large, and I wanted to build a device that was entirely self-contained. I also wanted to do it without spending $20,000 and nine months of development time. Suction cups work by creating a pocket of vacuum, or as close as you can get, between your device and the surface. The outside air will then push on your device with a force that's directly proportional to the surface area of that vacuum pocket. My initial thought process was vacuum cleaner motors, because this is what everyone else had done, but since I wanted the device to be self-contained, I needed to find something smaller. The first thing I tried was ordering a blower motor for a Roomba-like product off of eBay. I was skeptical that this would be able to provide the pressure differential that I wanted, but I began some preliminary plans anyway while I waited for it to arrive. I wanted to keep the size of the pads down, but I knew that if the motor was less powerful than I was hoping for, then I could always just make them a little bit bigger to get the same effect. My goal for each hand was to be able to hold around 400 pounds perpendicular to the surface they're attached to. The vacuum motor arrived and I was very underwhelmed with the result. My basic test where I measured how many inches upward it could suck water in a tube showed that the motor could only produce about 0.4 psi of vacuum pressure. That means that to lift 400 pounds, I need pads with 1,000 square inches of surface area. The Roomba motor was a dud, but luckily it only cost like $8. I needed something new. I went back to eBay and I started looking at vacuum pumps, and then I found these DC diaphragm pumps for around $15 each, so I ordered two. Generally speaking, a pump moves air much less quickly than a fan, so it wouldn't make sense for an application like a vacuum cleaner, but they can also allow you to reach much higher pressures. This pump was advertised as being able to reach negative 76 kilopascals, which is about 11 psi. I revised my design and settled on a device size of one square foot per hand with a vacuum area of 11 by 12 inches. With a perfect 11 psi, this would net me 1,452 pounds of suction from each hand, although I'm sure the result is considerably lower than that. From here, the rest was simple. I made the pads out of cheap plywood and I powered the pumps off of 12 volt 2200 milliamp hour lithium ion batteries, which should give me about a half hour of suction time based on the pump's 50 watt rated power consumption. I bought door handles made out of bent steel tubing for the user to hold onto and I added on and off switches and battery indicators to each device. One of the most important considerations was the gasket that would form the seal between the wood and the wall. This needed to be something soft so that it could form a tight seal and make it into any small deformities in the material. It also needed to be something grippy so the pads wouldn't just slide down the wall when you put any weight on them. To accomplish all of this, I settled on some silicone weather sealing strip meant for windows and doors. Another important consideration was how much energy the user would have to put in. Now, I obviously could do pull-ups all day, but for those out there that don't want to do that, I decided to add optional foot straps. These were just some loops of rope that I put little PVC pipe on that attached to the bottom of each climber. This way, all the weight could be transferred to your feet, taking almost all of the physicality out of the climbing. 
The devices are actually incredibly simple, but I still ended up spending like $100 total to make them because of all the stuff I had to buy in bulk. If I was to build another pad, it would probably only cost around $35. I think the technical name for something like this is a portable vacuum assisted climber, but I also like to call them low altitude vacuum seals because it's fittingly vague and it sounds like the thing from Spider-Man Homecoming. I finished designing that high altitude vacuum seal. Okay, so the first test didn't go great. I learned that to get a good seal, you have to initially give the climber a good push so that the gasket can expand and fill all the cracks. I took what I learned from this and was able to perform several much more successful tests. Despite my initial failure, I felt confident to give the climbers their first real world test. So I found this large concrete wall and began my climb. I ended up going all the way up and down about 15 feet twice. The device worked remarkably well and I learned a lot. I found that as an alternative to pushing the pads firmly against the wall to get a good seal, you could also slide them down the wall a little bit and they'd lock themselves into place. I also found that I was able to go down the wall without lifting the pads up at all. I just had to disengage the pumps and slide them straight down the wall and then re-engage. I think with enough practice, I could do a similar technique while climbing up, which would make things much quicker. My test went better than I could have hoped for, but there are some obvious problems. One that I did not anticipate was a design flaw with the foot straps. When I made them, I didn't put much thought into it, but I figured that adding the bit of pipe would help the rope to not squeeze your foot so hard. That worked, but what also happened was that the straps slipped off your feet very easily. Because their design was totally flat, they would then press up against the wall and become very difficult to slip your foot back into. You can see that most of the jankiness of the climb in my video comes from me trying to maneuver my feet back into the straps when they fall out. But if this is the largest problem with the device, I'm totally okay with that. The other component that needs the biggest improvement is the gasket. While it does form a pretty good seal on completely smooth surfaces, it's not thick enough or soft enough to climb rougher surfaces. I can stick to wood, glass, concrete, and metal as long as it's smooth, but I can't climb something like brick. It also has the problem of forming a good seal in the corners. I made the pads a square to maximize surface area, but it also means that I had to make the gasket out of separate strips, which don't form a perfect seal until they're fully compressed. In fact, the air tightness of everything is pretty bad. I have a brass hose adapter screwed directly into plywood. The wood, of course, is porous, and the weather sealing is not made to make things airtight, because then you definitely wouldn't want it for your windows. Perhaps most importantly is the massive element of danger to it all. I have an irrational amount of trust in things that I've made myself, but I have to acknowledge that hanging from door handles screwed into cheap plywood is a recipe for injury. I felt very safe going 15 feet up, especially because I had two hands attached at almost all times, but I'd be pretty scared to go much higher with the devices in their current form. The nice thing is that all of these problems are fixable or at the very least manageable. The foot straps need an immediate redesign to something more 3D so you can slip your foot into them much more easily when they're pressed up against the wall. My goal is to eventually be able to climb brick, so I'd like to make the gasket out of a different material altogether, possibly even cutting it out of one large sheet. If I can't do that, I'll probably have to make the pad circular so I can use one continuous strip of material. While I don't think I got the 1,400 pounds that were possible with the pump I used, I definitely got at least 400. So I could probably make the pad circular without increasing their size and still be able to support plenty of weight. 
Of course, the plywood's going to have to go soon, too, for something more durable that can house all the different components in a much more contained fashion. I'd love to add a pressure gauge to the climber so that you can see how good of a seal you have before you actually put any weight on them. If I did this and I did manage to get a good enough seal, I could potentially cut out the need to keep the pump on at all times, where you could just pump out all the air and then it would maintain the vacuum. This would also mean I'd have to have some sort of controlled release valve, but it would also let me be a lot more power efficient and quieter. It's incredibly satisfying when something you've been working on for a while finally comes together, and I'm blown away that this worked on the first try. Well, almost first try, but it's still very exciting for me, and I can't wait to keep working on this. If you want to do something like this, though, just please be safer about it than I was. Thanks.